Greetings everyone and welcome back to another installment in the series called Tacky Tablets. This is a series in which I test technologically terrible tacky tablets that I've collected over the years to demonstrate any redeeming qualities that these devices may have. And in today's one, there is no exception to this being probably completely useless in almost 2023 since 2022 is almost over, but this tablet just intrigues me. I don't know when it was manufactured, I don't know the brand name, but I do know one thing. It runs Android, of course it does, but it's running a version of Android that I I have not yet looked at on this channel and that is a version of Android 2 and this version of Android that's on this thing has some very weird stuff going on with it so we're gonna investigate this thing and I'm not sure how I'm gonna go with app compatibility I'll try and install the usual apps on this thing but I can't dump the system files from this and I will show you that soon. But before I actually show you the tablet, I'll remind everyone that there's timestamps in the description as well as the pinned comment so you can skip to wherever you need to be. If you wanna sit back and listen to this whole episode unfold, then feel free. But if you need to use the timestamps to skip along past any bits that I decide to ramble along, feel free to use them. You ready for this one, folks? It's called the tablet that doesn't fit in fuck. Well, that's fun. It's called the tablet that doesn't fit in fuck. Yeah, I got this Doom guy figure too, by the way. I kind of want to put him in the uh, camera test now because um, it's pretty sick and uh, it, it's sick. JB Hi-Fi, 20% off at the moment. It was 35, now it's 27. I think that's a pretty good deal. But that's just what fell just then because he barely stands up. If he puts his feet together like that, he stands up. But nah, man, he's got to have action pose. Like fucking, you know, fuck. There we go. Right, now I'll just put that back to the side and continue on what I was talking about. What was I talking about? Hopefully this fits in frame. Yes, it does. This is the tablet. It has no brand on it. It is as generic can be. The back is a very nice gray plastic. We do have some indicators of the ports on this, but I'll actually show you the ports themselves. Let me flip this thing over and show you what the front looks like. It's a very poor attempt at being a knockoff iPad. The screen ratio is just not correct. It's not the same as the iPad. The camera is there, by the way. Not there, just somewhere there. This has a 10.1 inch display. Something that I've actually reviewed that's close to an iPad clone was either the Anal Spark or the really terrible iPad knockoff. I'll card them both up here if you want to take a look at them. But this thing's a whole different world. And where did I get this thing from? Of course I got it from eWaste. For 10 whole dollars, I seen this thing and when I didn't see any brands on it and then I seen what ports this has on it, I kind of thought, well, this is definitely something to take a look at. But let's look around this tablet, all right? So thickness wise, I probably should use an iPhone 4 4 to do like thickness comparisons with since everyone should know how thick an iPhone 4 is. It's about the same thickness as the iPhone. It's ever so slightly thicker, but we have a little area that covers up where a screw would be. And then if we slide it along, same thing with that side. There's also a little button there. I'd say that's a reset button. I haven't tried it as of yet. I actually haven't really played around with this thing entirely. I've charged it up. I've went into settings and that's about it. Everything else on this thing is a complete mystery to me. Nothing on this side of the tablet, just all plain. And at the top, here's where things get interesting. We have a little stylus that's built in. It's just a plastic thing. This actually doesn't work. So I'll just put that back and pretend that doesn't exist. There is another sticker covering a screw. We have a speaker grill a little antenna connection because that does serve a purpose. We have an on button, volume rocker, menu button, home button, another speaker grill, a little switch that's actually ripping off the mute switch on the iPad and iPhones. But this is actually the Wi-Fi switch. Makes sense. And another hole covering a screw. The ports on this thing, going from left to right, we have the 5 volt power input, an ethernet jack, mini HDMI, two USB type A ports, micro SD card slot, and a headphone jack two type A ports and a micro SD card slot. That's probably why you can guess why I can't dump any system files from this thing. It's because I can't actually connect it to a PC. I've tried using type A cable to type C to connect to my computer, doesn't recognize. I've tried a couple of other configurations and it just doesn't work. So I have no idea what I can do in that regards. But otherwise the whole thing's made of plastic. Apart from the ports on the tablet, it's a fairly boring design. And I'm also very sorry for all the scratches and stuff. Since this is all plastic on the front, it's gonna get scratched quite easily. So unfortunately there's not a lot I can do. All right, let's power this thing on. I want you all to pay attention to this boot process because there's just several things that happens that I just sort of question. And then when it actually boots up, I question question that as well. So here we go. Screams at you first of all. Android logo, all looking normal so far. Then we have a Linux logo up there. Okay. And then we have Android in text. So you keeping tabs? All right, cool. Just got to give it some time. There you go. And there you get the actual Android boot logo. Still following? Ready for it? Oh boy. 
Well, let's break this down. We have a Windows 7 wallpaper. Then we have slide to unlock that's pinched straight from pretty much the first iteration of iOS. Also, the display on this is absolutely terrible. I'll try and bump the brightness up on this so you can see it a little better. Has this helped? I don't think it's helped. But now if I just slide to unlock with an Apple Pencil, there is a widget pinched directly from Windows 7 that lags at <laughs> one frame a second that goes along there. That's good. So it boots up with Linux and then Android and then it's got Windows with iPhone looking stuff going on. Does that make a whole lot of sense? Probably not, but hey, this is why we're here to investigate this thing. So if we press and hold this button, it doesn't do a whole lot because there's no assistant features or anything like this. It is very, very basic. Oh, oh, uh oh. There's no accelerometer built into this. <laughs> You've got to manually control it. It reckons it's a Saturday, the 11th of December, 2010. Fair enough. Uh, so we've got clock, little camera shortcut, volume, little menu that pops up, back button, the wallpaper, my pad, browser, gallery, music player, video player, and settings. But I'll just go for a close up on the display. I would say maybe 800 by 480, possibly. It's not that clear at all and it's just very very blurry and contrast wise it is very lacking a very cheap panel that they've put in here for sure so if i now add widgets what widgets can i put on this thing so i've got analog clock which i'd say would be oh that's kind of windows 7 sort of thing god i miss windows 7 what's power control I clearly clicked power control. The touchscreen is probably really iffy as well. And the performance of this thing too is really good. That's what the weather widget looks like as well. Pretty much pinched right from Windows 7 as well as those as well. A friend of mine did some digging and found the manufacturer's website for this thing. It's actually called the Superpad Fly Touch 2 WWE 10, which I actually had no idea what the name was throughout this entire review, so I know now. Going into the applications list, we have MyPad, Browser, Email, Music Player, Video Player, Gallery, Calendar, Real Calc, Sound Recorder, Camera, Clock, Contacts, Market, when the Play Store was called Android Market, Gmail, Ethernet Settings, with Internet Explorer there. Also, the icons have been pinched off iOS. Settings, Bubble Worlds, which means we have games to test. We have GPS test version 2.2, which is just unbranded. System update, Facebook, iReader, Opera Mini, eBay, audiobooks, books, Solitaire, Jules Legend, Jewel Star, Search, Voice Search, Dragon Gem, Kayak, Navigation, and Wi-Fi settings that stretch there. I'm going to jump back to the shortcuts menu. We'll go to animation mode. What does that say? 2D translation and 3D rotation. If we do 3D rotation, I'll probably break the thing. Oh, okay. That's a bit smoother. That'll do. Let's check the wallpapers. Okay, so we have pinched off iPad. Nexus wallpaper, I think. Pinched off iPad, I believe. Pinched off iPad, I believe. Pinched off iPad, I believe. Oh, definitely pinched off iPad. Not sure about that one. It's not ringing any bells. That one, 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 that one. Also, I just realized it could have been pinched off Mac OS too. That's a thing. But where's the Windows 7 one? Maybe that's hidden somewhere along here? Hang on, was it here somewhere? It wasn't. There's nothing in gallery, so that picture is just hidden, I would say. Just agree with it. Let's jump into wireless and networks. So we have Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi settings, VPN settings, and mobile networks. But there's no SIM card slot. Unless it's one of these tablets that came with that little dongle that has a SIM card slot on it. That could be a possibility. Or there's a hidden SIM card slot in this thing. So now if I go to Wi-Fi settings and hopefully it finds my networks. Yes, it does. Okay, good. We can connect to a Wi-Fi network. What does the keyboard look like? Looks like that. I did use Android 2.3.6 at one point in time on a Huawei Ascend U8300. This sort of does look familiar. One version of Android that I've barely used, like I've probably used it once or twice is Android 3 Honeycomb. I have barely touched it. Finally connected. I don't think I'll be able to do terribly much with Wi-Fi, but I'll try my best. Ethernet configuration? It'd be so weird just plugging in Ethernet to an Android tablet. It just doesn't seem right. I can definitely stuff around with all the settings. I should actually try it. Sound? Don't have much in here. We have audible selection when making screen selection or haptic feedback. I'll put haptic feedback on just to make sure the vibration motor works. Uh, notification ringtone? Oh, Android 2 two ringtones. Oh, Beatbox Android. I remember that one. I just didn't know it was called Beatbox Android. As well as Caffeinated Rattlesnake. Okay. Also, the speakers um, don't sound great. We'll get to them soon. On the hunt. 
Oh, wow, that brings back memories. Otherwise, nothing much within here. Display, brightness, auto-rotate screen, animation, which I've put that down to some animation, so then it kind of runs a little bit better. Screen timeout, don't need to do much there. Location and security, guess we'll leave that. Obviously, there's no fingerprint unlock, face unlock, or anything like that. I actually don't remember which version of Android 2 it's on. We'll get there soon. And all the applications installed on the system. So I'll just scroll through this, and if you see anything dodgy, feel free to let me know, but I'll be trying to install Quick Shortcut Maker to see if we can just stuff around with any of the settings. I don't know if we can, but I'll try my best. I'll be playing some of the games that are on here too, and I'll try and install GTA 3. I'll try and sideload it just to see if it will work. Setting storage there is a bit inconspicuous looking, but we'll try that. Terminal emulator? I know Android's based partially on like a Linux kernel or something like that, so that probably explains why it booted up the way it did, but to me it just seems weird. Nothing too exciting within applications. Accounts and sync? If I need to put a Gmail on, I will. Privacy? Factory data reset is just in there, nothing else. SD card and device storage? So we have SD1 and available space, 718 whole megabytes. Search is just Google search settings. Also, this home button can be used to go back once. Uh, language and keyboard, fairly basic there. Date and time, let it do its thing. Touchscreen calibrate, I'm not going to touch. That's a bit redundant because it will probably stuff up once I go into it. Upgrade system. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Update cannot be stopped once you confirm to update system. After download is complete, the system will restart and install the new update automatically. Let's just check to see if it has something. No, failed in checking for updates error 301. Well, I tried. Plus, if there was a server still having Android 2 updates available for it some way, that'd be great. In about device though. So we have the model number is Disco. We are running Android 2.2. Android 13 is out. Let that one sink in a little bit. Kernel version is listed just there. ZH Jun Jun or something. Build number FRF85B. But yeah, it's a disco. The only thing I know about this tablet, it's a disco tablet. That's it. In status, we literally have that. Nothing else. Don't have any serial numbers, IMEI numbers, nothing. That's it within settings. So far, it is looking just very generic. With a device running Android 2.2, I'm going to just say there's not a lot we can do with this. And especially now in 20. 23. If it can't be upgraded past Android 2.2, then it's basically e-waste at this point in time. Well, I did get this at e-waste, so that kind of makes sense. Let's just test out the applications. Let's just go through them, see what we can do. Let's start with MyPad. Can we draw some stuff? No, this is a file manager. We have 2.29 gig free. Okay, there's a Chinese folder. What does the Chinese folder have in it? A text file. What does the text file say? I just do HTML viewer. Cannot be loaded as the requested file was not found. Okay, well, that's helpful. That's all that's on the internal storage. That's it, because then my SD card is all of that. That's correct. So there's not too much you can do with this. I wonder what the text file is. I'm just going to open that up on my computer real quickly. I've opened the text file up and it, it's just a whole bunch of gibberish. It's just all nonsensical characters that are on there. So I'm not too sure what that would do. It's 336 kilobytes. Also, I have to apologize for the viewing angles on this as well, because I'm having to try and look at this thing as well as record, and it's just kind of a little iffy. You can see my face just there, trying to look through the viewfinder to see what I'm doing with this thing. I'm trying. So that's my pad, is my files. Browser. We can't do anything in browser, can we? There is no internet connection? I'm sorry. Okay, no worries. Well, there clearly is, but all right, sure, I'll just agree with that. Let's type in iPad. Okay, iPad. How do you enter? I guess you just press that and then just go Google search and it'll just work. All right, let's try and go onto Apple's website. It'll probably complain about the certificates, I'd say. Oh, yep, there we go. Okay. Well, I guess that's good. If you are trying to upgrade your tablet that's running Android 2.2 to an actual iPad, at least it does come up. It's still loading. We're getting there. Oh, no, it's completely loaded. Okay, let's just go buy. Let's see how we do. I have a feeling this might spontaneously combust if I try and push this too far. There we go. Will Apple Pencil work with this iPad? Nope, Apple Pencil's working with this one, so don't even have to worry. Obviously, yeah, I'm not going to be able to do too much with the browser due to certificates and all that sort of stuff, and plus it's very very basic, but there's Opera Mini on this, so I'll try that. Email, we don't have to go into, but Music Player. Okay, BFG Division time. Music Bass. Yep, that's it. Also, Uncone. Is this really how loud it gets? Oh my god, this is how, <laughs> this is how loud it is. Are they both working? Both speakers are working. They are the most pathetic speakers on this planet. Well, it's not a speaker test without actually measuring how loud they are. I bet it won't even pass like 90. Let's just wait.
You can do it, buddy. Get to 90. Come on. You can do it. Oh, oh, so close. So close. Five stars, really great effort. They are the most useless speakers on a device. It's literally like two earpieces that they've put in this thing. Not loudspeakers, just earpieces that they've just stuck in there and went, ah, it's fine, no one will care. So multimedia is great with this, well done. Uh, video player, let's try 4K. It's not gonna work, but I just figured I may as well try it. Oh, uh, that's a no-go. There you go. That's video playback. Also the background there. I don't know where that's pinched from. Is that from Windows Media Player? I'm fairly sure that's from Windows Media Player. Someone will have to let me know. Okay, so far this thing's pretty boring, but let's continue on. Hmm. Okay, I'm confused. Galleries just shows all the pictures, but I can't actually see all the default wallpapers on this. Calendar looking like iPhone calendar. What does this look like? I'm only opening the calendar. It's okay, buddy. We're not pushing you to the limits just yet. Real calc is gonna look like that. Looks god awful. At least it's still rad though. Let me see if it actually does have an accelerometer. No, it doesn't have one. Or unless it just takes a long time. Give it a moment. No, okay. Sound recorder. Hello. Do you even pick up sound? Most likely not. Uh, how do I access it? <laughs> Camera's up next. Does it even work? Oh God, it works. Well, I'm recording at night time, so I won't be able to do any uh, photos and videos with this, but I'll definitely do it after I finish filming for tonight and then splice them in, and then you'll enjoy the wonderful quality that this camera has. 1600 by 1200 photos. Okay, and super fine quality. What about the videos? You don't have anything there, but it says high down here, which no limit high, no limit low. MMS low 30 seconds and YouTube 10 minutes. Do you remember when YouTube had a 10 minute limit? Oh, that was a long time ago. And the camera test won't go for that long because it's only just a front camera, so I can only do a couple of selfies and a quick little video and that's it. But I have to tear this down while filming tonight, so hopefully this survives. Enjoy the quick camera montage that you're about to see. Is it recording? I can't even tell. Yes, it is. Okay, I'm recording with the most generic tablet in the world. This is the quality of it. Also, this is the only part of my backyard that has sun in it, so uh, just demonstrating the quality even more. Uh, it's got some jelly movement to it. It's also very choppy, uh, but can't expect much from a camera from 2010, 2011, something like that. Well, actually, I know when it's manufactured, so it's 2010. Not much to do, you can't zoom in because it's only one point multi-touch, and uh, here you go, that's about it for the camera test. Very short one at that. Let's continue on having a look at this thing. How many frames a second is it? Like six? Maybe seven? I'd like to play you back the video that I just sort of took to demonstrate, but I just can't do that. Clock looks like... Yep. Oh, you can actually use it as a clock like that. Okay, imagine having this as a clock on the side of your desk, just as a clock, nothing else. That's fair. Contacts, don't need to go into. Market, oh God, look at that. Wow. Now that should bring back memories to people who used Android 2. Gmail, don't have to go into. Ethernet settings is gonna be the same shortcut that was in settings, yes it is. Settings we've been through, but let's try a game which is Bubble Worlds. Let's see the performance. Those speakers are really trying. Gaming performance looks a little something like this. Oh, hello, we have stuff. There we go. That's what this looks like. So we'll just do this and we'll do that. And off we go. Fire. Oh, there we go. Yep, okay. 
That's as basic as basic. So I just went into GPS test and it just shows a whole bunch of numbers and I'm pretty sure it showed coordinates for my location. So I'll just leave that. System update is gonna just be system update. Can't do much there. Facebook, what does Facebook look like? Straight out of 2010. Well, we can't log into it, but we can at least see what the login screen's gonna look like. Oh, there you go. Wow, looks basically the same. I don't think nothing has changed, to be honest. iReader, is there any books on this? Oh, there is. Oh, here we go. This is a free book that they've put on this. Wow. Perhaps this was the text document that I tried to open up beforehand and it just didn't want to open. It was just garbled text, but this is something or other. I'm not even sure what this is. There's a couple of English words. I know that, but apart from that, can't really tell much else that's going on here. Opera Mini. I was going to say, it just opened up ebook. It's installing it, it's loading, but it's still not going to help us with the whole certificate thing. Yes, the date and time is all correct. Oh, hello. Wikipedia did work. Fake iPad. How does one press go? Uh, go. Oh, that Chinese button was the search button. That makes sense. Let's just try and open a website. See how long it takes. Oh, it loaded. Shit. And it actually loaded the pictures too. You can somewhat use this tablet as a browser if you wanted to. I wouldn't though, because I don't even know the RAM that's in this. I don't know any specs about this. Nothing at all. But at least there's a guide to tell you if you have a fake iPad or not. Obviously, what I have in front of me is a completely legitimate iPad. That's 100% certain. It goes back pretty fast, I'll say that. eBay from 2010 probably, what does this look like? Agree. Whoa, look at that. Audiobooks, are there any audiobooks on this? All titles. Jesus, okay. There's a whole heap of audiobooks on this thing. From A to, holy crap. Okay, is Jurassic Park on here? That's just the first book I thought of. No, it's not. The Jungle Book's on here though. Oops, something went askew. Usually the internet failed for an unknown reason. Please wait a few moments and try again. Note, internet is required. That's helpful. Oops, please try one more time. If that does not work, you will be able to send us an email that includes info we need to look into the issue. Okay. Oops, tap email issue to send us some info about the issue. Email issue. So obviously it is just an app for audiobooks that you just download them and listen to them. Maybe it's Audible. Books is just Google Play books with nothing in it. Solitaire? That I don't know how to play. Ah, okay, um, this one can go to there, and this one can- I have no idea what I'm doing. I've never played Solitaire properly. At least the cards look, uh, fairly high res. Bit of a derpy queen there. Jules Legend is another game included on this thing by iTree Gamer. At least the speakers are trying. Oh, yep, okay, and then you just let it do its thing and it does it for you. I don't have to do anything. Oh, okay, now I'll do something. Something like that. Well, there you go. See, I know what I'm doing. Jewel Star, I'll just leave. Search, voice search, Dragon Gem, though. I'm kind of intrigued what's Dragon Gem. Dragon Gem doesn't open, so I guess we'll leave that. The whole thing's frozen. Okay, let's see if this button actually is a reset button. Yep, that's a kill switch. Navigation, let's see if it finds my location. Google Maps navigation is not yet available in this location. Good to know. And then Wi-Fi settings is just Wi-Fi settings and that's it. All right, let me try and get some apps onto this thing and we'll just check the specs and I think tear it down because there's literally not much I can do with this. The specs are what I really want to know. And also how to dump the system files off this thing. Basically trying to manually get GTA 3 working from my SD card just doesn't work. Let's open CP Z and check the specs of this if it's going to be correct. It's an ARM1136. The GPU is a GC600 core. That's not ringing any bells to me. Also single core as well. Well done. Um, it just decided to close. Okay. I'm going to just try a whole bunch of other apps. Let me open spec device. It's searching. It's finding. It can do it. This will be like one point multi-touch I'd say. Yeah. One point multi-touch. Have I actually ever had that before on a device? Probably. GPS is available. Uh, yes it is. It had built, but okay. All right, so the manufacturer is unknown, but it's a WWE 10, Android 2.2, 1024 by 600 display, 7.4 inches is not 
correct. Not multi-touch one point, fair enough. The GPU is a GC600 Vivanti Corporation, 512 meg RAM, four gig flash memory, one core processor. Phone says GSM, sure. The camera says two megapixels and that's about it for this. So what the hell is the processor in this thing then? Also looking on the manufacturer's website, we do have the specs saying two gigabytes of flash memory, high, high resolution variable rate screen, WVGA 1024 by 600, 10.1 inch TFT, Android 2.1, IMAP X210 one gigahertz processor. So all of these specifications are actually correct and I'll find that out during the teardown, but it's very interesting, all of this. Uh, it does say built in 3,800 milliamp hours, but that's not correct. Let me open Quick Shortcut Maker. That will probably just crash too. Oh, hello. Let's see if there's anything that we can open that might be interesting. There's two cameras on here. Let's try this one first. Is this a different camera or is it the same one as before? Uh, it's the same. That's just actually the gallery. Okay, fair enough. Dragon Gem Email Info TM Home. Okay, well, let's have a look at this. Oh, wallpaper gallery, which we've been through. This is a really uninteresting device. I thought it would have been somewhat interesting, but unfortunately it's just got nothing good about it. Terminal emulator. I'll actually be able to bring this up now. Hey, there you go. Just a small update with the terminal emulator. A good friend of mine's given me some commands to put into this. And the first one I put in is for the CPU, which says it's the IMAP X200. And then I was able to put in a command for RAM and we have 381,808 kilobytes, but it most likely is 512 megabytes inside of this, but I'll definitely have to see when I tear it down. Also, I've been using the terminal to try and copy these system files to a USB, but I keep getting permission denied for everything, so I don't think I'm gonna get too far with this. That's it, it's very basic. It's just a very generic, device. Thankfully, I didn't think of this as a big main review. It was just, I got this from eWaste about a year ago, and I thought it'd be just funny taking a look at it because of the whole Windows 7 and iPhone looking stuff and looking like an iPad thing, but it's just very uninteresting. I think the most interesting part will be tearing this down, so let's do exactly that. So power off, off we go, and that's what that looks like. So I'll just slide to power off, and it's off. In a second. Give it time. We're getting there. You can do it, buddy. Whoop. Okay. What did I learn in the DJ1000 video? Do not pull the shielding off. If you weren't on my last live stream, I have bought an iPhone 14 Pro Max, uh, a whole bunch of silly, stupid iPhone cases, and I have also got another DJ phone and another phone from that seller. I'll probably show you all the other DJ phone that I get, but I got it in black, just so then I've got a black and blue one for some reason, I don't know. A surprising thing about this as well is when I first got it, obviously the battery was completely dead, and obviously I haven't opened this up because the battery actually works and actually holds charge for a device this old you wouldn't expect that to happen but it has all right let me take out the four screws i think that's all so i assume i just put my pry tool in between the frame and then just lift and done that's about right i'm not liking what i'm seeing not that i'm seeing a whole lot but okay you ready for this so the touch screen cable is just dangling there the Cable for the screen, can I actually just remove this from the actual screen itself? Yeah, it just might make it easier, that's all. There we go. So that's the screen assembly with just tape on there, some screws holding it together. Just put that to the side. And now we get a look at the innards. There's the speakers there. What even are these things? Tin cans. They are literal tin cans. Very solid performance. Good. Glad they worked, didn't they? Oh, what's what's this here? Oh, okay. That's just a, a USB Wi-Fi card, I'd say, that they've just put there. Yeah, that's USB for sure, isn't it? Raylink. Yep, that's repurposed. The battery is 8,000 milliamp hours, so 4,000 milliamp hours each cell. Not too bad. The motherboard, though, everything is underneath. So we're going to have to take the motherboard out and flip it around. Also to note, 2010. That's when this thing was manufactured. 20th of the 1st, 2010. So next year, on the 20th of the 1st, 2023, this thing will be 13 years old. And it still works with the original battery. How? I don't know. The vibration mode is just down there as well that's a little guy uh there's also a glob of hot glue holding some wiring down for the speaker that makes sense there's also the antenna connection there if i destroy this i don't feel as bad because it's not a very fantastic device as it is it looks like it's dual stacked 
Wait, the motherboard looks like there's two layers. It's hard to see, but I'll get to it soon. Coming back to the speakers as well, if they were pointing up, they probably would sound a little bit better, but since they were pointing face down into the plastic, that's probably why a lot of the sound wasn't actually working. Maybe when I put it back together, no, I won't be able to because of the screen, it won't be able to sit properly. Maybe if the speakers go that way then, then the sound can sort of travel out, maybe? There's the camera, which I haven't done the camera test with yet, so hopefully it still works. This is a uh, that. I'll Google that and see if it comes up with anything, but it's probably two megapixels. We can do this. Oh, uh, okay. I accidentally powered it on. <laughs> What's on the other side? Oh my god, it's a conglomerate of fuckery. Does that make sense? So, what this is is an I don't know, is probably the best way to describe this. The shielding's not there, there's no shielding, so that helps. So there's a motherboard that's soldered onto another motherboard, and that's how that works. There's two flash modules or RAM chips, I'd say they're RAM modules just there, Samsung ones. I'll Google them and see if they match up to be 512 megabytes. But then if I flip it around, let's have a look at this thing. Okay, so we have a chip I have never heard of before. Infotmic? What kind of fuckery is this shit? What's this bit of tape holding? Oh! Oh! Well, hello there. I can dump the system files. Actually, the tablet's on. Kill switch, where's the kill switch? Where's the kill switch? Uh, it's somewhere here, there it is, kill switched. All right, now I can take that out, yoink, that's mine. Wonder what's gonna be on that then, oh. There it is, Info TMIC IMAP X210 BM180. That's what the processor is. I've never heard, I mean, IMAP I've heard of, Texas Instruments, but that wouldn't be a Texas Instruments processor right there. Info TMIC. I'll Google it and see if it comes up with anything. That's the first time I've seen or heard of that thing. We also have a module just there, which is a TRX Com. No idea what that is. Once again, I'll Google it. Uh, there was no Bluetooth on this, was there? That's another thing gone. Unused flex connected just there. There's literally no uh, micro USB on this, or mini USB. In fact, no connections for it. There's another module just there, which is that. I'll Google that and see if that comes up with anything as well. Can't tell what it could be, but I'll check. There's another module just there. There's a whole heap on this thing. And also 2011 is when this thing was also partly manufactured too. Here comes the question then. What lingers on you? There's only one way to find out. I have a feeling the OS is on, yeah. Aha! Uh -huh. There's like about 16,000 different USB drives that are opening up on my computer right now. I found the text file, so that's there. Okay, so I've just got a data folder that has nothing in it. Let's do an experiment. See, this is the fun part of the video, tearing it down. And as I said, if I kill it, I don't really care. I mean, I, I do care still, but you know. If I boot this up without that memory card in, what will it do? Probably complain most likely, but you never know. Yeah, it works. Oh, 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 no card in machine, but I haven't killed it. So that's a good thing. So what I'll do is put it back together and we'll just make sure that it still works. And then I'll finish this video off. Well, it still works. I've just tested the speakers as well and I think I've killed one, but that's okay. That doesn't matter. I had a look through the files that I got off the micro SD card and it seems to be all Android based stuff. I'll display most of the specs for this right on screen. So feel free to pause the video if you need to. I'm pretty sure most of this will be correct, but at least I know like battery, the CPU, which I still haven't looked up as yet and all that sort of stuff. For a $10 device, at the end of the day. Can it be used for much? No. Did we have fun with it? Not really. But at least I know that this is definitely a tacky tablet. So I've got to give this a tacky tablet score. How tacky is this? Well, it works. There's no dodgy stuff on it. It's just extremely cheap, doesn't do much, runs an outdated version of Android and has some elements mixed in. It's not that interesting. So I'll give it a pretty low score, to be honest, I think. If it had much more interesting features, then maybe. I think the most interesting feature is mainly the hardware, that micro SD card and that motherboard configuration as well is also something that's very, very bizarre to this, I think. I should have tried another game, but I don't think I would have got too far since this only has one point multi-touch. Games just wouldn't have worked well on this. I'm really iffy when it comes to reviewing devices that run Android 2 point whatever, because I just don't know what to test on them, and thus the video is not really that interesting at all. Regardless, I hope you enjoyed having a look at this pretty generic tablet 
thing that has stuff from other things on it. Yeah, it's fine. We'll just power it off. At least that's one thing I can get off my list and say, well, it's done. I've looked at it. I don't have to do too much else with it now. It's finished. But I guess that's going to do it for this video. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you for sticking around. Um, as I said, it just wasn't that interesting to look at. At least I did find that hidden micro SD card. That's at least something. But look, if you had to use the timestamps to skip along through the video, that's completely fine. That's why they're there. Otherwise, folks, that's another installment of the Tacky Tablet series. I hope you enjoyed this one once again. Thank you very much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. As always, please take care, stay safe, be good people, and I'll see you all in the next video, which, as I said, I've got a lot of stuff to do before 2022 ends. And now that I've ordered stuff for Farley Express, I'll hopefully do a couple of those before the end of the year, if they actually get to me by the end of the year. We'll see how we go. Until I see you all next, please take care, and I'll see you next time. If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video.